Hello everyone, I wanted to do a real quick uh, update video on the Yaw2 Pro uh, overhead wiring situation. This is uh, the first revision I've done after my first try. I'm going to go fast, I don't feel like talking for a half hour about all this stuff. So if you're new here, uh, go over to my previous video and you'll see my first attempt and motion and whatnot. I can't film, point out, and swing the chair by myself all at the same time and nobody else is around so I'm gonna just show it to you and then uh, if you have questions or whatever I'll film another video with the motion when my son's here so back to the situation here updates since last time this thing right here is that giant uh, zero turn lawnmower weight it's from a Toro time cutter 3200 uh, mower that was out quite a while ago. I had the weight in my garage. You'll see how I have the weight offset to center, right? Like there's more of the weight on the right side here as opposed to the left side. That's to offset the uh, Hotaz weights. The Hotaz is left side heavy, so I offset right. So this weight works really well because I can slide it back and forth and I have a built-in uh, roll weight adjustment mechanism which does not come with the chair they just give you a center option so my little rig is better than the real one what we got here is one of the yaw hotaz plates mounted to the back of the chair this is a floor flange from a hardware store this is a 90 degree elbow these are three quarter inch these copper pipes now this is where it gets cool these copper pipes are water heater um, you know hot water uh, intake lines they're corrugated copper pipes they look like hoses they have like hose ends they're three quarter inch um, you can get them at hardware stores or whatever I picked out the two nicest looking ones the reason I like these is I wanted something to hold all my cords up above my head that was flexible yet very very stiff so good luck finding that well, I did. So hardware store, DIY stuff. There's two of them because they're stiffer. One, I put the initial one up. You can see where the cables are on the left one. I had one on there. And then uh, it wasn't quite stiff enough. It would bend. So I just tacked another one on with more zip ties. So obviously this is sort of mocked up. But uh, you get the idea. So anyway, this is all your hotaz wiring. All that stuff comes up through here. I still have my little weight situation here and now here is where it gets cool so all this is all cleaned up computers bolted to the wall so it's not moving then i have four zip ties with all my stuff bolted to like the rod on the case that's all steel screwed in it's not moving i've checked it a hundred times cables going up a new ceiling hook with a single uh, spring key climber uh, clip loose in there this time. I don't need it tight. I had it tight before. I got it tight here. I don't need it here. So now this is it's, this has got all the play it needs. I put doubles up here and long and short. Now here's the original ceiling clip with another single with another single on the end of it wired in series. So it gives you twice as much distance here as opposed to this one. I don't need it. Now over here, there's my ceiling hook with a single up there connected to another single. So you get, again, twice the distance. Now, here's where all the thought process. Now, bear with me here. When I first, let me get my pointer. When I first started this rig, I was like, Okay, where is the center of the room? Where is the center of the chair, etc. So now if you look like down from the center of the chair and you look up, you'll see that hook. Wow, oh, why is it to the right? Your gut would tell you that you would want it centered above the center point of rotation of the chair, which is about right here straight up in the middle of your butt. This is clearly not there. It's like two feet to the right. But here's the deal. So 
you know, you ha I was thinking about this, like, how do I get a line hanging from the ceiling yet stretchy? So it's like, it kind of looks like a spider web if you think about it. So I started thinking about, well, you know, this, that's a web, that's a web. How would you do this? So you stretch this down and move everything around. And that's kind of what you have to do. You have to just constantly adjust your tensions, fix your wires, and etc. So back to this. So there's your uh, heater connectors, heat, water heater connectors. This is a male to male three quarter inch adapter that fits in there. That is one of those clamps, super clamps from Amazon. This is a random uh, metal sort of like loop clip thing I had in the garage. And you'll see how I have this set up. So I have the adapter screwed into the hose thing. Then that metal clamp is in the end of the male to male adapter. One tooth of the black headed clamp is in there with the thing in the mouth, the other clip, big end in the mouth, and that's for a reason. And then the other teeth on the top of the clamp. So it all fits together tight, right? This is all stiff. And then you can see where I put this zip tie like so. The reason I put the fat end up is you zip tie it like this and then this zip tie will not go up. So it, it's loose, but it won't slide up. So these cords will not touch the teeth of this adapter, right? Because these are sharp, you don't want that. Plus, your keyboard keys and my haptic slash butt kicker uh, cords right there need to be separated. And you need them physically separated. So that's how I did this. I got all these little zip ties. The whole idea with those zip ties is to get these two sets of cords apart. So when you turn, you know, they don't get in the way. Initially, I didn't have that. And then these cords would scrape these teeth right here, which is bad. So I, made, I just literally made up a thing to hold these in a ring away. So I just was like, everything I had just, and I just put it together now here. So if you think about the ceiling is hard and flat, right? And you have your stretchies. So for my particular setup, I wanted the same thing for my head, right? Because I have some head audio and everything else situation going on. So if you, if you look at this, the ceiling on the upper part, is the equivalent of the copper tube here. I made a mini stretchy rig for my helmet right here. Now, now imagine that's the ceiling. That rubber band is your stretchy. So it's a stretchy on top of a stretchy, a concentric ring of like a spider web. Now watch, whenever this chair, take my word for it, I've trusted it. When you bend this in 360 in every direction, the head cord, the black cord there, does not get pulled from up here. All of this is rigged up. That will not move on those cords. It looks like it's loose. It's not. It stays exactly where it is. So when this chair pulls from the red cord, this will pull down and not tighten the black one going to the head, right? It's built in slack. It's like a dock line on a boat you, there with tension. Now in here, you'll see I did the same little thing. So these cords right here can slide to the head up and down. But look, there's a rubber band right there. So that's your stretchy. So when he pulls, there's another one back here, just like the ceiling, watch it. Whoop. So you can move totally excessively, but you're completely neutral under normal circumstances. But when you go excessively, you get a rubber band pull, which is nice if you think about it because it's warning you that your head is getting too far, but it still lets you do it without damaging any of your cords. These pop, you just replace them, right? They're a dime a billion. You can get a billion for a dollar. And just put them back on. So same thing on the top. I'm gonna put this down, I only have two hands. But the idea, you pull again, wonk, there's your head. If you pull hard, it's gonna pull you back. But the rubber band acts to pull the cord 
in reverse, if you lean forward, see there, there's a shitty rubber band. I got a better one I got to put on, but you see it just broke. So I have to tie that. But before I had my little weights hanging, right? You can see the weight pulling it down. That rubber band that just broke went straight across to the right. So you see what it would do, right? When you pull your head backwards, that rubber band would tuck this all the way to the post. So it's automatic. And then your upper one. So you can move your head all around. doesn't do anything. But you don't get any cord in your neck. Now, let's see if I can do this. This is super hard with one person. So you'll get an idea of how it pitches too. But watch this, if I can do this. Just kind of soak it all in, right? See how it all stretches independently and some are longer than others, right? So that's why you got doubles. And when I say this thing goes back, it goes back, right? So I'm just gonna let it down. Then you'll see, let's get another angle. This thing, this chair is quite heavy to lift when it's off by yourself. So, and you'll see when it twists, right? Just go in 360 in your mind. But it goes around and that doesn't twist. You will, what's cool about this, I didn't even realize this till it was done. Your twists will show up right here. When this is twisted, your system, your chair is twisted. So you have a really easy visual indicator of whether you're in a twist. It will not twist through here. There's nothing to twist. So this is the only spot. And again, you can program these chairs not to twist. You can set the yaw limits, 180, 360. It's all kinds of settings, so you can make it work. But there you go, right? So we'll pretend like I pulled my head way too far. See, so you get slack, right? This is the head cord. You would never do this, but it has the capability of giving you some slack. Looks sketchy over there, it's not. But it's all loose, right? But it will pull it back up, you know, when you set it. I got it pulled down now. But, and then the chair. So effectively, if the chair leans down, it pulls from right here. This is all tied hard. So here's how this works. Watch this cord when I pull this. This, the other one shouldn't get tight, right? You can see it works like a spider web, like in a concentric collapsing mechanism. And the other point about this ceiling hook not being in the center of rotation, that is by design because... If you put it straight above and you have your cord going off to one side, it's going to want to pull, you know, in that general direction. So it's intentionally offset away from the computer to the chair. See it? So it's like whoop, straight down the cord further than the chair. You know, it hooks up here pretty centered in this between these two. So don't pay attention to how long it comes this way. It's the center of rotation. Think of like two orbiting planets if this was space. One doesn't orbit around the other one. They orbit around each other and there's a centric point um, that doesn't move in space, like a zero gravity point. That zero gravity point on this chair is like right here. So that's intentional. So when the chair spins, the center is roughly right here instead of over here because when you're at hard down close to here and your center point's too close, all your situation gets bunched up. So this way it's stretched out. This works. It doesn't matter that it's not over even though it looks weird. So that's the idea. I'll try to spin it and show you that. Watch it turn. You see how that it all stretches independently? Like each side can do it. You're not relying on any one stretching mechanism to do the job. And you'll see how that 
center point twist. So I'll just keep going. But it can do a bunch of twists and it won't hurt it. Again, pulling from center, pulling from side, still able to pull from side. Plenty of slack, ain't going nowhere. And you know, here's like what? A bunch, three, four twists. So then you can see your twists. And in real life, you're never gonna twist that far. It's not gonna do it because you're gonna program it to return. And it returns without you knowing it while you're in VR. It's subtle, right? It just kind of sneaks back. Then it'll hit you with another turn, you know, to deceive you while keeping the chair straight. So there's all kinds of ways you can do it, right? You can set it up how you want. Obviously, a cordless headset would make this a lot easier. But remember, I could not get my HOTAS to work in their USB port. So I had to wire mine all up to the ceiling. So that's why mine is like extra complicated. But uh, yeah, so back to the tuning. I'm getting it. The yaw tuning program, apparently SRS is way easier to tune. I wasn't even aware of that. I just went with Yaw's instructions and started going through their installation process, assuming that their motion software was completely proprietary. Apparently it isn't. Apparently you can use SRS and it's like 50 times easier. I'm so balls deep into Yaw though, I'm gonna keep going until I can't do it. If I can't do it, then I'll switch it to SRS. But the actual physical part I think is done here. And it does work. I've, oh, the other huge, huge thing. So I had my chair tracker on that uh, mount, right? That went up like a like a rooster's uh, mohawk or whatever above this. I took that completely off, you know, because this is getting in the way. Good idea up there if you can make it work. But uh, your chair tracker can go anywhere as long as it's trackable. So here's what I did. This is absolutely beautiful. So you remember my fancy pants homemade left mouse situation, which is magnetically attached to the throttle by a bunch of big magnets from a random bracket, like a shelf bracket, which actually rests on top of the base of the hotel's plate. So you can't pound it down. It's quite firm. Very nice for flying, so you don't have to take your hands off the joystick. You can just do it with the throttle hand. Very nice. Now, so I was like, well, I want to use my left-handed controller for my chair tracker. Where do I want my left-handed controller? By my left hand, which is what I did with my mouse in the first place, so I just extended my idea. Now, I used my little clamper. If you remember, I have my Hotez plates mounted on those bathroom shelf industrial pipe floor flangey clamps. You can buy them in the shelf section. Then I have that little action mount, which the name of is in the previous video. It literally bolts to the pipe exactly perfectly. There's a layer of sorbethane between the teeth of the clamp and the pipe designed to absorb vibration, which is important. Uh, 360 ball joint metal gears although I did break I had a couple of these I did break them you cannot turn them as hard as you absolutely want you will snap them they're like plastic in there it is quite strong but I overdid it um, so push hard but not really hard anyway so you got that you can articulate that in 360 all directions so it's beautiful now bring it up all right there's your sorbethane. There it is, you see that stuff sticking out? There's your sorbethane. Clamping the metal portion, the metal brace portion of the controller between the palm grip and the sensor wing thing. There's no electronics in that portion and it's all metal. So I'm not squeezing plastic, I can squeeze it super tight. Then you'll see so effectively it floats in space, right? Look at this. And it's quite stiff. Again, you'll see touching the controller, right? Watch. Look at the chair rock. 
you can literally move the chair from this. So if this little bar can move this entire chair without this moving, it, it will have zero problem keeping this still relative to this. Now remember, the software is reading the motion of this plate. This is absolutely solid bolted in sync with the software. Your HOTAS plate is mounted to that, or your HOTAS pipes. My controller pipe bracket is mounted to the pipe, which is mounted to the plate. It doesn't get any better. I had it up through the chair before. You got a lot of variables going up through here and shaky shake, right? So your ass and your top of your head, it's hard to get this to hold still up here, especially with things vibrating. So if you got something winging off the top, it's gonna wave like a flag, right? You want it down here. It's tighter, not as much vibration, sorbethane, and here it is. And it's right by your left hand. So you just clamp it in. It takes one second to take it out. It's not stuck in there. It's clamped and it floats and it's right by your left hand and you can move it at infinity, right? It can just do whatever. Now check this out. This is cool. So you get the little like palm strappy thing. You got, and then those toggle switches, watch this. You just take this and just lay it around a strap and it stays fine. It doesn't even do anything. These are super strong switches. They ain't going nowhere. But this tightens this guitar string. But it's floating because you don't want these touching because this vibrates. If this touches hard, hard on hard, vibrate, joystick, bad. Sorbethane float, sorbethane clamp, floating. This is loose, so it's not going to transmit vibrations. But it's pulling it because the joystick is being held this way. So this is tight. So it holds it even better, right? Watch. You know, it takes a hell of a lot to even move it. I mean, yes, of course, if you wrench it, it's going to go, but that works awesome, right? So you're flying. Ah, I want to do my cockpit stuff. Oh, but I'm in a turn in my plane. I don't want to move. Boom. Ah, oh, my screen's off. Reset it. Duh, right? Super clean. Super, you know, as light as you can make it. And it's all left-handed. Now remember, this is heavier than the joystick, hence the offsetting of the Zero Turn Toro Time Cutter 3200 front nose lawnmower weight. Now you know which one to buy that fits. Toro Time Cutter 3200 front weight. 25 pound matches, it's got a hook on it, it's perfect. It literally slides perfect, it's like it's built for it. So, again, Let's do this. My rubber band's off. There was a rubber band going from that little zip tie straight back to the pull. So that would pull that cord back when the head goes back. So just pretend there's a rubber band right there. It kind of does. All right. So this is these stretchies in here. No tension at all when you're actually flying in normal. So you don't feel any pull on the cord until you go excessive when the rubber bands engage, which pretend this is a ceiling, these are your ceiling hooks, there's your cord. There's your ceiling, there's your hooks, there's your cord. Big version, mini version. You know, that's it, right? It's a spider web. And then I had to take all this apart because some of the cords are bunched up. Oh my God, it took like six hours to do all this, but I got it all clean now, so. Wired everything behind, monitor, speaker, so you can hear the headset. Extra key, keyboard, cord, and all that. It's all cleaned up. Good enough for my take. So, I kept this raw so I could film a video, right? You know, it's got a little steampunk sort of view to it. Um, in my opinion, it's not that pretty, but I don't care at this point. I'm so sick of building this thing, I just want to run it. But the last but not least thing I forgot to show is this. So this stuff is pipe insulation. This is the big stuff, it's like wider. But you'll get the idea instantly, right? It just opens 
and wraps. It's pipe insulation. I'll just put it on a little bit and you'll immediately know what I'm thinking. I don't know if this even fits. I haven't really tried it yet. But imagine, obviously, you can cut it and whatnot, right? These are like eight bucks for six feet. It's really soft. Feels like a water weenie. I was looking at water weenies, but that stuff actually might be useful because it's stiffer. So if you wanted to introduce some spring into your cord somewhere, like a black water weenie, one of those like, this is real soft. You know, it's more like leather feeling and very bendable, whereas a water weenie's got a little more stiffness. But you'll see, right? You could like wrap whatever. You can get cord wrapping kits. The other thing I got too was this. So you know this thing swings like a wild animal. And so I found this. Anti-slip glow in the dark floor grip tape. It has a glow in the dark strip and it's grip tape like a skateboard and it sticks to the floor. So, you know, yeah, that's the thing. Cool. So I'm gonna do a little line, right? Like that, corner it, and then just go to the wall. I'm not gonna go around there. I'm just gonna make one big section, stay the hell out section, um, put some signs up. I'm gonna make it fun, put some warning signs up. There's your, your functional magnetic emergency stop switch. Ready to grab when you're flying, much easier than grabbing the orange tag itself. I had this custom made. And then your legit pull to eject cord again, which is fun. Real five point harness from a race car. You want to get out, you're sitting in here, you just take your left hand and literally just yank it. And you are open. It doesn't look open, but it is. Watch. It just flips open. And you're out. It's designed to be pulled out fast so you can pull. A flaming driver out of the car um, yeah so there you go one thing I'm gonna do I noticed too when I was riding it is I've got the police car mount it's bolted through a hole on that mount but it swings a little bit so I have to put another bolt on the far side of that brass bolt to center this so it won't rotate but this little police car laptop thing works awesome so yeah everything works I don't even want to mention it, but I, f I eyeballed, there's a space through here, look. You see the space to the other side of the chair? Kind of where my little hotas mounts go. Now, oh my God, if I can figure it out. I want to mount, I want to take, you see these hotas, and then this plate, right? This bar that goes through, cut these feet off. Cut these silver feet off, take that section with the right and the left, take that horizontal bar, bring it down through there, stick it through that little arced hole to the other side, strip all this off, bolt that down, and then I have rotating, freaking adjustable, infinitely adjustable, on the fly, Hotez mounts, which nobody got. So... I think I can do it, but I am out of gas on this. I just want to ride it at this point. I've been working on this thing for too damn long. So, but she's a go. So again, we'll do a we'll do a little quick tour of the thing. See if I can try to pull it down. Watch here. So you can see how that separator mechanism keeps the head and the keyboard cords away from each other so they don't scrape. See that? The, the chair squeaks when there's nobody in it. It doesn't squeak otherwise. But I try to go real slow so you can see all the motion. The two left ones are double, the one to the far right is not. The reason this head cord looks tight is because the head <laughs> is hanging. See, 